Well, today we're going to take the take apart a horn, remove these bindings, and rewind the armatures. Or the, the we're going to rewind the poles, but not the armature. Armature is the part goes around. The poles are here. These are the fields. We're going to rewind these fields and um, replace them with new enamel wire. Sometimes if, you know, if the horn just isn't performing and you can't adjust it, chances are that the windings are shorted. Um, what you can do, you can, with your meter, you can measure the amount of current that the horn is taking, and that can give you an idea that the, if you're drawing too much current, then it's shorting. There are several places to find out about about the horn. Um, one, what we call our Bible, is Les Andrews' Model A Mechanics Handbook. So here's the horn. Shows the cutaway. Show some of the details. Um, so the discussion here, he goes through how to take it apart, how to put it back together, but not necessarily how to rewind the coils. When we take the cover off, now we can see the inner workings and you have the brushes, the armature and the field coils. But what happens traditionally is that the field coils were wound with a cloth type insulation. It would get hot and uh, flake off it would, and it would, the coils would short out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take one of these apart, rewind the coils with some modern which is called enamel wire, so it's it's actually there's less uh, insulation material, but it's actually a stronger insulation because of the enamel. So once we once we take the working mechanism off, now we can get at these coils. So what we're going to do. First, we're going to tie back the brushes so that they won't pop out. Otherwise, when we take it apart, they pop out and it makes it gives us a problem putting it back together. So we'll just tie back those brushes. So what we're going to do, since we're going to be rewinding these coils, uh, the, what I did, I made a notation here. I want to note down and document which way the windings go clockwise or counterclockwise and where the ends tie in because that's what makes the field coil, field magnetics that run the motor and we want them of course to be the correct uh, polarity on the mag magnetism. Okay, so we want to um, we want to tie back those brushes so we're going to take a business card this is a piece of a business card. We reach in here and pull the brush back. And we're going to slip this business card in behind the brush, between the brush and the commutator. Now you can see I can, in here, I'm just going to grab that in pull it through. Now I'll pull that through. Take a strip of scotch tape. Tape this. Now it's a good idea on the on the other end of the scotch tape, fold this over about a quarter of an inch. Tape it down, that way you'll be able to get it off.
Now we're gonna position that. Now we'll pull that brush back. And tape it. So now we have the brush pulled back from the armature. Just taking my knife blade, pull that brush back, it's through, put our scotch tape on it. Then we're just going to pull back slightly, pull that brush back, and tape it down. Okay, now we have the, the brushes tied in place. Now we'll go ahead and take this Finish taking this apart. Now we're going to take this off. Now there is an orientation to this with this. This is the uh, rub block that rubs against the wheel. And there's this there's a spoke wheel that rubs against the rub block. And as this, as you find sometimes, this is incorrectly oriented now because that rub block, since this should be the seam down and the connection side down so those line up then this rub block should be vertical because you want it to be vertical the same direction as the um, this is armature rotating wheel with the little knobs on it that's what makes the sound. And if you notice that you have the mounting holes and there is a another hole right here. Okay, that hole, when we finish, when we put this back together, that hole is in line with the rub block. So if we put this hole at the bottom, when we put it back together, then everything will line up correctly. There are two gaskets, uh, one on the top and one on the bottom. There's some consideration that the replacement gaskets, after the ones that you buy, can be a little too thick. If they're too thick, it makes it hard to adjust the, the right sound. In order to take this apart, these wires, and this is what I was saying, that the, you can see where the insulation is, is showing in, in some spots here. But what we're gonna do for now, we're just gonna cut the wires off, and we're also gonna cut the wires off that go to the brushes. So we're gonna cut a little bit of length there. That way we don't have to solder back to the right on the brushes with the possible uh, damage in them, we can solder onto that short wire that we left. Now here's another, another situation. This arm is what holds the armature up, up tight. And then it is adjusted here so you have pressure on this end with this adjusting screw pushes up against this spring arm. What you want to look at, this arm comes over, it's cut, the back part is cut at an angle. It's cut at an angle so that it rests against the inside of this curve 
so that it will maintain its position on the end of this shaft. If you look at others, this one has been modified. I don't know if you can see it. It's, it's not long enough. So the tail, even though it's at an angle, it's not up against the curvature so that this can actually, it can actually rotate. Not that it's going to, but, and there are two tabs here on either side that keep it in line also. Now we can take off this little arm. Now when we pull this off, the armature is going to stay with the base. But we've tied the brushes so they don't flop out. Now if you want to take the armature out, we will have to remove this nut on the end to take the armature out. Of. But I think we can clean that clean that armature up with uh, a little abrasive. So now we have our two coils out here where we can get at it. Now what we're going to do, we're going to count the number of turns. So now there's a this wire which is going to connect to the upper brush and this one is going to connect down to the contact. So when we take these off we're going to count the number of turns. So that's one turn. So we're going to count and it should be some say 40, some say 48. So there are 40 turns of wire on here. And what, what we're looking for, the number of turns and the size of the wire determine the amount of uh, magnetism you're going to get. And it's a function, it's called ampere turns. So if we have a six volt, and then we have the resistance of 40, 40 turns of wire. So the six volts divided by the resistance of this 40 turns of wire gives you the current. And that current in amperes times the number of turns, which is 40 turns, gives you 40 amp turns, and that's how you, you calculate your magnetism. So that was done when they designed it, and so that's, we'll just put it back like they had it. Um, now it'd be interesting to measure the length of this wire, 124 inches long, 10 feet, 4 inches. That gives us an idea then And that is what's called number 20 wire. If we wanted to rewind this for a 12 volt horn, we would use the number 20, 24 gauge wire because it's smaller. The smaller the wire, the more resistance. So that would, we would have the 12 volts divided by a higher resistance, so we get the same current. But what it, if you use this number 24 wire, we actually have to put in, for a 12 volt, we have to put in 100, 100 turns in order to get the same ampere turns. So if we wind it with this number 24 and put in 100 windings, then we will have a 12 volt horn. So what we want to do, we want to leave a significant amount so we want to end so we, we wound we unwound it clockwise so we have to wind it back on counterclockwise so we want to leave it enough on the end to make our connections so now we're just going to start winding and count the number of turns 
Let's do three. It's not necessary to wind them as a, you know, real evenly. It's merely ampere turns that we're looking for, so they don't have to be nested in any particular area way. And this is our tail, so let's cut that off. So we have, we now have 40 turns of wire on this spool. And we have the, the tail end coming down which will connect to our contact. The beginning end is starting here. That will end up tying to our brush. Now, of course, it's the same thing on the, on the other side. Our inner wire is the one that's going to go to our contact. The outer wire is going to come up to the brushes. So I'll just... Bend a little hook in there. Now we're going to do the same thing here. So we'll take it off going clockwise. And the last one was 40. So both sides had 40 turns on it. So we'll start in here. And we're going to go counterclockwise now when we put it back on. So let's just tie that down a little bit. And we're going to go so that's one and forty. Actually, what we're going to do, we're going to put this back together, and in the meantime, before we do, we're going to clean up that armature a little bit. You can take this, if you want, you can take this armature out, put it in an electric drill, as discussed in uh, Les Andrews' book, he just says put it in an electric drill, turning slow. But we cleaned that up pretty good and polished it up. Now you want to be very, very careful. But you want to clean out between the between the commutators. I think we're around. Yeah. So now what we'd like to do, and maybe just to drop of oil on the end of that. Nice little tool buddy, toolbox buddy oil. We used to call it sewing machine oil. See with those brushes tied back. We can slide that armature back up, right back up in there. And we're going to put oh we will get a nut on there so we don't lose it. And our bracket here.
and I think we need a we need the lock with us. Now you can see that 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 arm now isn't is centered because it's up against the back part of the curvature. And there we have the armature back in. Now we'll release those brushes and we have the tape tied back so we, we can grab hold of that. Just pull it around, lift that out. Again, our free end here, pull it around. and slip that out. Now that's turning nicely. We're gonna strip some of the insulation off the wire. Let's bring it out here. Because the insulation is enamel and it's actually painted on So we have to scrape it off. Then we can put that back through. And what we can do here, we left a tail on the end of the connector here. But for this, we can probably, it's easy to get to. We can just unsolder that and we'll solder right into that hole. We have some interesting stuff. This is called solder wick. When you get it off, the solder will flow up in here. So we can, when we unsolder, it actually will soak up that solder. Get the wire down in there. Now to solder it, we want to heat the contact and let the solder flow in. Then we'll do the other side. Now we want to so we now we have to strip this side. Now according to the book, the inner end, the starting part is the one that hooks to this contact. So we'll go down through here. Okay, we got a nice contact there. Now we're going to have to strip this. We're going to make a mechanical bond by 
crimping these two together. Now that we'll do the same on this side, and then we'll solder them. off. Okay. There we go. See if we did anything right. We now have a rewound six volt horn now now it's just a matter of reassembling probably clean up a little bit and uh, might notice that while we have it apart the screw here that holds the cover on you have the big hole for the adjusting and you have a small hole for holding the cover on. And it would be easier to put in if it were a longer screw. But if you look underneath, I don't know if you can see that, but if you screw that in too far, the end of that screw could hit the this brush. So this screw is only threaded up about a quarter of an inch. So that, and this is an original screw, so it won't hit the, the uh, brushes. The screw we took out of one or the other, the screw was threaded all the way. It was still a short screw, but it was threaded all the way. Um, it's okay as long as you make sure you don't that it's short enough that it doesn't go all the way down oh now let me also point out the wire that that plugs into that comes from your wire harness is a bullet type and everybody says well how can you fit that in there well there's a little hole underneath here and that bullet goes in and snaps right in there that's your contact. So let's take those, those bullet wires and just pop them right in there. And then, see there's a hole down underneath. You just pop that right in there. That's your contact. I noticed on one of these, there had been some soldering done because people didn't understand how to connect to them, so they tried to solder the wires on them. But anyway, they just snap right in. And your wire, your harness should come with these already on the end. So, we just rewired a horn.
now we can put this in, pick our locating hole that goes on the locating tab there. And if we get this untangled, so that our seam is on the bottom, and so we're going to line up the, the seam with this area here. Depending on adjustments, 